Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Against Me LP, Transgender Dysphoria Blues. This is the latest full-length LP from Florida rock band Against Me, a group who rocked me to my core when I was in college with records like Reinventing Axl Rose and their acoustic EP and Disco Before the Breakdown and Crime. A lot of these records featured a blend of folk music, punk music, anarcho-politics delivered with incredibly passionate vocals and poetic lyrics. And even though Against Me had some really rough recordings in the early years, once the year 2000, 2001, 2002 came around, they hit this musical stride that was incredibly captivating to people who were still searching for a counterculture message in contemporary music. The music here felt punk, it felt rebellious, it felt like it was standing for something without sounding like just another 80s hardcore knockoff. And of course it also helped that the songs on these records were really well written, they were incredibly catchy, lyrically they dealt with the world at large, but they were also very personal as well, talking about things like love or lack of confidence or personal anguish. There were also a lot of songs that dealt with spitting in the face of longtime rock cliches Shays. Against Me's music at this point in their career was really large in scope, really ambitious, but also sort of down to earth and relatable. And the recordings, even though they were raw, the performances were very intense. It was hard not to get just wrapped up in what the band was playing in the moment. Records like these made me feel like the world was going to hell in a handbasket really quickly, but at least we were going to be singing a really fun, loud chorus along the way. Now, now after reinventing Axl Rose, I believed wholeheartedly that Against Me was going to go on to do something really bold and genre-defying in the near future. But I couldn't help but feel like I got the bait-and-switch routine on the band's next record as the Eternal Cowboy. On this record, Against Me moved on to the Fat Records label, and in the process they sort of took on the typically pop-punky production sound that many bands on that label had. Against Me's sound was definitely a little cleaner, it was louder, it was punchier on this record, but I couldn't help but feel like their raw sound and their folk influences were sort of being erased in the process. Now don't get me wrong, the songs on this LP still had really clever politically charged lyrics, and the tunes are really catchy, and this is what made Eternal Cowboy enjoyable, but Against Me made the path that they were going to be moving into on their future albums really clear. Now on Against Me's next three studio LPs, they continued to gain fans, they actually moved on to a larger label with Sire Records. However, I personally was feeling that the sound of their instrumentation was just growing more and more Tame. That wild spark that was in many of the band's early recordings was just vanishing completely and Against Me was sort of sounding just as overproduced as any kind of commercial radio-friendly rock band just with more obvious punk influences. But there have been some significant changes going on in Against Me's music that has caused a lot of people to pay attention to the band once again. For one, the band's longtime drummer Warren Oakes decided to leave the group Two, Against Me has actually recently dropped a lot of demo and B-side albums based upon earlier releases of theirs, and the founder of the band and once frontman Tom Gable came out as a transsexual woman and admitted to having dealt with gender dysphoria since childhood and changed her name to Laura Jane Grace. Now, considering that Laura's songs have always been the foundation of Against Me's music, and these songs tend to be so personal, it's no surprise that publicly admitting something like being a transsexual woman would stir up interest in Against Me's next album. Without a doubt, fans were expecting Laura to kind of give them a front row seat to whatever she was feeling during this transition or address all of the social issues that come up during a gender identity crisis. And even I was interested in hearing what would happen if Laura marched bravely into these subject matters. Especially once the title of this new Against Me LP came out, Transgender Dysphoria Blues. Obviously this LP was not going to be tiptoeing around transgender topics, but that is also not what every song on this record is about. So Transgender Dysphoria Blues might not be the shocking tell-all album that a lot of people might have been expecting. And even though songs on this thing, like the title track, are great catchy tunes, I wouldn't say they bring much insight to the life that Laura may be leading now. It's a pretty simple, straightforward rock song about being judged by others on site, 
being spotted as a man despite dressing like and feeling you are a woman. But the thing is, most New Against Me songs don't really delve that deeply into the politics and the issues that they deal with anyway. The language is typically pretty simple, it's poetic, it's personal. It's not like there's any kind of solution hidden in the lyrics here. I mean, if you're a person who is sympathetic toward LGBT issues, then what you're gonna get on this record are a bunch of rowdy rock songs that affirm your already established feelings. You can bob your head to the music and nod your head to the message. And this is not necessarily a bad thing. I like to listen to songs that I agree with ideologically and tracks on here like the title track and Fuck My Life 666 and True Trans Soul Rebel are my favorites. My issue with this record sits on against me not really making music that I find to be stimulating anymore. The band's recordings, their instrumentation, and their melody seem so tame in comparison to their early stuff and just about any other rock band I would rather listen to. For example, the song Unconditional Love. It is obnoxiously sugary in the same way that a Green Day song is. And the wordy lyrics barely, barely hold the rhythm against this incredibly stiff set of drums and guitars. I can barely stand this song. And the same thing with the track Dead Friend, too. It seems like the subject matter of this track would be something that would affect Laura very deeply, emotionally. However, the vocal delivery and the instrumentation, the guitars, the drums here, just seem so inappropriate. With the way the instrumentation sounds on this song, it feels like I could swap the lyrics out for a story about a cute girl at a coffee shop, and it wouldn't really be that unfitting. And the song Two Coffins, another track that I can't stand, an acoustic ballad that should really see Laura letting loose. But unfortunately, it feels just as rigid as any of the louder rock songs on here. The track just feels like, from beginning to end, Laura is trying to squeeze emotions out of this incredibly dry, lifeless instrumentation. Even the loudest, most hard-hitting song in this entire LP, Drinking with the Jocks, has its aggressive limitations. The only tracks that actually overcome these production issues are the ones where the songs, the tunes are so catchy and well-written that they're impossible to deny, like the tracks that I mentioned that were my favorites and the closer on here, Black Me Out, one of the most legitimately moving songs on this entire album. Even without diving too deeply into the lyrics, Laura's vocal delivery on this track is just so impassioned, it's a very beautiful change of pace. Transgender Dysphoria Blues, the recording, is really clear. Some of the tunes on here are memorable. The lyrics here have direction and they focus on valid topics. And I think in a sense, musically, this record does have variety too. It has ballads, it has more aggressive tracks. It even has moments on here like Obama Bin Laden as the crucified Christ, which instrumentally feels a lot like a 90s alternative rock radio tune. All these things are not bad things, and they are things that have also been qualities of Against Me's past several albums too. What continues to be missing in Against Me's music, and in a way is more missing than ever on this new record, are legitimately overpowering emotions, instrumentation, guitars, and drums that are actually hard-hitting and exciting and visceral. I think this record lyrically makes a lot of good points, but musically, it's tame. It's too tame for me to enjoy, really. I'm feeling a strong five to a light six on this LP. Transition. If you've given this hair a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Hate it? Why? What do you think I should hair next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano against me. Hair forever.